Do do do. Get right into it tonight, I guess. You're about to witness the strength of creep knowledge. Good evening, and welcome to the Fortean Slip. This is episode 205, The Minority Report. Welcome. Uh, <clears throat> still waking up. Took a nap. Probably wasn't the best idea in the world. But it happened. Uh, Katie, how are you this week? Oh, you know, it's Monday. Yeah. Gas prices are surging. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just barely, I stopped and got gas on my way home because I still saw it at three ninety four, <laughs> And I was like, ooh. <laughs> I paid four twenty two today. Ugh. <clears throat> yep. It was not good. Um... Thank you, fucking Putin. <laughs> 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 fucking bald and prick. What the fuck? Ugh, that whole situation over there. I, I mean, I I will go out of my way to say that um, war is horrible. It's a fucking horrible thing, and what's going on is horrible. However... I had somebody explain this to me. Well, not personally, but like going through shit and listening to stuff and listening to people talk about this. There was a Russian guy. I can't remember who it was. Uh, that was trying to explain the situation. And he was like, imagine that Russia and China and Korea, North Korea, and let's say... India are all in like a pact like NATO. And they're trying to get Mexico into their pact. And they're just outfitting Mexico with weapons. Designed to fight us, by the way. I think America would have a fucking bit of a problem with that. Word. <laughs> so, while I don't condone anything that's going on, I think people should take a bigger look at the broader fucking picture. And that is that the United States and NATO told Russia that we would not expand any more eastward. And yet we have for years. So, like I said, while I don't condone what's going on, I think it's horrible. Uh, and, you know, my... My thoughts go out to the Ukrainian people, obviously. They're going through some fucking horrid shit. War is, war is horrible. Um, I think people need to take a look at the bigger situation that's going on. Um, instead of just listening to what the media just fucking dishes out to you. Which is fucking hilarious to me at this point <laughs> it's just gross so i i mean you take it as you want it people um <clears throat> but i think that if something very similar was going on with russia backing like mexico it wouldn't happen with canada obviously i <laughs> mean <laughs> but I, we already have a litmus test for this with the Bay of Pigs. Like we already with fucking Castro. Like we already know how this would go down. It got very fucking heated. So I just think that everybody's saying that he's a he's a crazy madman. I can't believe he's doing He's a fucking Cold War dude, for one. And this is very much like what he would do. Yeah. 
I mean, this is Russia in, we're talking in, about. <laughs> in response to what NATO and we have been doing. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I'm not, I don't, I don't condone it at all, but I understand the action a little better than I did before. That's all. I just thought it was an interesting way to look at the situation. Um, and I've actually brought this up to a few very liberal friends, <clears throat> very, very liberal, liberal friends who have said that is an interesting point to ponder. So it is very interesting, especially because everybody's always debating on whether or not we should go and stick our nose where it doesn't belong. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe we already had our hand in this pot and well, yeah, kind of it, didn't even realize it, you know? Well, it's not even, and it's not even that it's, we, we like to be the nanny of the fucking world, but then turn <laughs> right. around and we'll fucking go invade a country if we want to, <clears throat> you yeah. know? Uh, my, my favorite thing probably all week was Condoleezza Rice admitting that the Bush administration committed war, war crimes, basically, on TV. I must have missed that. <laughs> that, was, that was probably the best thing I've heard all week. Uh, yeah. 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 I thought that was fucking priceless. So... But it, all administrations are the same. They all do the same shit. We live in a fucking military industrial complex. So we're all yeah. going to be a warmongering fucking nation until that changes. So um, I just thought that that was an interesting perspective on this quote unquote. I mean, it is a war, um, but I don't quite know where it's like it's this is one of the weirder ones I've seen in a while. Yeah, it's complicated for sure. It, it's so like we have fucking corridors for people to fucking evacuate and then we don't and then we do and uh, uh, I, I don't understand from one day to the fucking next I don't understand this war yeah it's it's very it is it's very complicated and uh yeah so my uh, my my thoughts obviously go out with all all of those people out there I don't know what that does for them but you know people say that shit so I guess I should say it too. I don't know that it does anything for him. I don't think it does shit. <laughs> um, very supportive over here as I go to work and do my thing. <laughs> <coughs> ah, shit. <coughs> Fuck. It's been one of them days. Ah, uh, so uh, let's get into the news tonight. All right. Our first story tonight from IFLScience.com. That's I fucking love science.com. Personal trainer dies after accidentally ingesting 200 coffees worth of caffeine. A man has died from ingesting a huge amount of caffeine powder, leading him to take around 200 coffees worth of caffeine in a short amount of time. Tom Mansfield, 29, was a father of two and a personal trainer, possibly taking the caffeine as a performance enhancer. Caffeine is often taken by gym goers to improve performance and supposedly increase fat burning, but should be taken with caution and in recommended doses. An inquest heard how Mansfield made a tragic mistake in using scales that measured in grams, not milligrams. The recommended dose range for the powder, causing a massive overdose. According to an inquest reported by the BBC, Mansfield miscalculated the amount and immediately felt unwell. With a rapid heart rate and complaints of chest pain, he began to foam at the mouth and an ambulance was called. He was transferred to Glan Clwyd, I can't pronounce that one, hospital in Wales. Of course it's in Wales, <laughs> you fucking weirdos, where paramedics <laughs> attempted to recitate him for 45 minutes before pronouncing him dead. The official cause of death was caffeine toxicity. The specific caffeine powder used by Mansfield was produced by Blackburn dis Distributions. It has a recommended doses, dosage of 200 milligrams with a maximum daily dosage of 400 milligrams. It was suggested that when he weighed the powder, he used a scale with a range of two to 
thousand grams, which lacks the resolution to go into the milligram range, uh, and may have resulted in Mansfield weighing a far higher dosage than required. Upon postmortem examination, it was discovered that he had a blood caffeine level of 392 milligrams per liter of blood. The case offers a stark reminder of the importance of thoroughly checking supplement dosage before taking them, as some may have a le have lethal consequences if taken. Why couldn't I find this shit when I was fucking driving for 24 hours? <laughs> Holy fuck. That shit is dangerous, man. I guess. I mean... I took. I used to take like no dos and shit. Well, yeah, uh, I did that too. Yeah, uh, but that yeah, that's fucking crazy. Like just, poof. wow, that foaming at the mouth. How traumatic. How could you? Uh, so, but if you've used the shit before, how could you not know the difference between two hundred grams and two hundred milligrams? That's what uh, I want to know. I'm sorry, but you can't fix stupid. And any moron who doesn't realize that measuring your caffeine intake, I mean, people drink like three monsters a day. Oh, yeah. I, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I used to be horrible about that. I used to drink. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I did too. I pushed the limits when Bull. I was younger. A lot of Red Bull, a lot of coffee. Um, if I'd have added caffeine powder into that, I'd have been a fucking dead man. Oh, so, yeah. That, that it, it just. It That's would so not crazy. have ended well. No. Yeah. Honestly, though, it kind of reminds me, though, of people who have died from um, those vape juices and stuff and those intense concentrates, and then they spill them. Oh, yeah. And you can absorb it through <clears throat> your skin, and you can die from nicotine overdose. Yeah, that's very, very easy to do. Yeah, um, and that shit's scary, and people have that stuff around kids. I, like, oh. I actually, at one point in time, I was dating someone who at one time worked in a lab where they were uh, first doing the nicotine patches. Um, and she had said that it was it was crazy. You you had to be so careful with that shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it was so dangerous. Uh, but on to our next story of the night from Newsweek.com. Uh, De-extinction scientists are planning to bring a long-lost tiger species back to life. De-extinction scientists are hoping... So they, why do they fucking do that? Like, why do I want to reread what I just read, you fuckers? <laughs> Almost 100 me. years after the last of its kind died. Researchers are planning to use stem cells to create an embryo of the Tasmanian tiger that they can implant into a surrogate animal. Tasmanian tigers, or thylacines, were a type of marsupial that went extinct in mainland Australia around 3,000 years ago. They lived on in Tasmania until European settlers wiped them out in the wild through hunting. The last living Tasmanian tiger died in captivity in 1936. Scientists with the University of Melbourne... Melbourne, Australia, have been working on a project to de-extinct the animals for years, and new funding for a state-of-the-art laboratory has brought them to the brink of resurrecting this lost species. Uh, excuse me. A philanthropic donation of over 3.6 million USD made to the university is expected to go towards the Thylacine Integrated Genetic Res Restoration Research Lab, or TIGRR. <laughs> Tasmanian tigers, also known as Tasmanian wolves, were a predatory marsupial that shared some characteristics with modern-day dingoes or wild dogs in Australia. They were visually striking animals with distinctive stripes similar to zebras on their hind legs. Scientists working at the lab said the funding would be used in three main areas in their de-extinction de efforts. Greater understanding of the Tasmanian tiger's genome using the stem cells from other marsupials to make a thylacine embryo, embryo and transferring it to a surrogate animal such as the mouse-like Dunart. <clears throat> the level of support we have for this project now, I think, is, I think it is conceivable that we could, we could a, they wrote that wrong, could a thylacine-like cell within 10 years? <laughs> Uh, Professor Andrew Pask from the School of Biosciences at, at the University of Melbourne told Newsweek, It's a big job and it needs some significant support to drive it. Fortunately, we now have that. It is a bit l like Jurassic Park. We start with a living cell from a closely related species, in this case, the Dunart. 
and we edit that cell to turn it in turn it in it g uh, and we edit that cell to turn it genome into that of the thylacine into i'm, I'm gonna say into a genome like that of the thylacine <laughs> once saw. you have your thylacines <laughs> Way to go, Newsweek. <laughs> Once you have your thylacine cell, you can use your clo use cloning technology to turn that cell into a living animal. Pask said that the donation would provide 10 years of funding for the tiger lab. Pask and his team helped sequence the Tasmanian tiger genome in 2017. This mapped out the DNA blueprint of the animal and provided a crucial first step on the road to bringing it back to life. Past said that Tasmanian tigers were a good candidate for de-extinction as they played a crucial role in balancing Tasmania's ecosystems and could do so again if they were reintroduced. The thylacine was our only apex predator, and its loss from the ecosystem destabilized everything that sits beneath it, Past said. A great example of this is the is Tasmanian devil facial tumor disease, which nearly wiped that species out. If you have these apex predators around like the thylacine, they pick off and eat the sick animals controlling the spread of diseases. <clears throat> he said that the gene editing technologies advanced at the lab could also help protect other key marsupial species in Australia threatened by ecosystem changes and recent wildlife wildfires because they help safeguard biodiversity from being lost in the region. <clears throat> the donation came from the Wilson Family Trust. Russell Wilson told the University of Melbourne about the decision to fund the research. We came across Professor Pass's incredible work, believe it or not, via some YouTube clips on him talking about his research and passion for the thylacine and Australian marsupials. We realized that we are on the verge of a great breakthrough in science through improvements in technology and its application to the genome. That's cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is so they've been exciting. Talking to, They've been talking about bringing back the um, uh, the woolly mammoth for a yeah. long time now, and right. I've heard nothing about the thylacine. Um, so that is an interesting one. Yeah, and the thylacine is something that seems way more realistic to like reintroduce to the wild than a woolly mammoth. Right, and it makes sense for them to have it for their ecosystem down there. Although I have heard arguments <coughs> that. Um, one of the reasons, uh, that global warming is such a pro that could become such a problem is because of the, if the permafrost in certain areas melts, uh, w what it will release into the air, um, and that woolly mammoths used to stomp down the permafrost in the frozen tundra hmm. and keep it from doing that. So I don't know. I don't know how, how much, you know, how much truth there is. That's what I read. It's what I've heard. That's interesting. Um, but uh, there it, there are some people who are trying to put together like a Pleistine Park type of thing, like a Jurassic Park type thing. Wow. But with uh, animals of like the, that era uh, to so that they can uh, create that same type of environment where they stomp that permafrost down again. Wow. That's that's wild. Yeah, because it keeps it keeps the it. If that ground remains frozen, it keeps it from releasing all like kinds of carbon dioxide and shit into the air that's trapped in the ground. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. So, like I said, I don't know how much truth there is to it. Just right. what I read. Just relaying the information, people. Don't well, the thylacine. The fucking messenger. It seems much more obtainable. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I've, uh, I've always been fascinated by them. That those videos of them, um, like the way they move, their mouths. Like I'm just like in totally enthralled with them and i still have hope that there's still a few hanging around but that's yeah. just also the little 12 year old me so yeah i don't think that there are it's very possible um i don't think that there are but uh this gives me hope that they could bring it back yeah yeah and that, which would be very very cool uh, excuse me uh our next story of the night from wionews.com uh World is undergoing six mass extinction and things don't look good for humans. Evidence suggests that the world is going through its six mass extinction as species are vanishing at an abnormally high rate. Most species could be extinct by uh, 2,200 if the current rate of extinction continues. The implications for human health and well-being are dire but not unavoidable. 
Nearly 99% of all species that have ever existed have gone extinct since the earliest inklings of life existed on Earth over 3.5 billion years ago. The evolution of species takes place over time, and as species evolve, they replace other extinct species. Extinctions and speciations, however, do not occur uniformly through time, rather. They tend to take place in large pulses interspersed with periods of relative stability. Scientists refer to these extinction pulses as mass extinction events. Around 540 million years ago, there was a burst of speciation called the Cambrian Explosion. Since then, the fossil record has identified at least five mass extinction events and probably scores of smaller ones. One of the most infamous of these events occurred about 66 million years ago when a giant asteroid crashed into Earth in what is now the Gulf of Mexico. For an extinction to be considered mass, at least 75% of all species on Earth have to become extinct within a short time frame, <clears throat> i.e. less than 2.8 million years. Throughout history, humans have caused smaller extinction events dating back to the late Pleistocene, uh, around 50,000 years ago, to the early Holocene, around 12,000 years ago, when megafauna such as woolly mammoths, giant sloths, diprotodons, and cave bears disappeared from nearly every continent over a few thousand years. From about the 14th century onward, the expansion of European colonialism throughout the world led to an extinction cascade, first on islands before spreading to areas of the continental mainland, as the drive to exploit natural resources intensified. More than 700 vertebrate species and 600 plant species have gone extinct in the last 500 years. Some say there is no likelihood that these extinctions would qualify as mass extinctions in the modern era, since they do not meet the 75% threshold. However, those are just the extinctions humans have recorded. Most species go extinct before they are even discovered with up to 25% of extinctions going unnoticed by humans. We lose the services provided by species when they disappear. The result is reduced carbon sequestration, exacerbated climate change, reduced poll pollination, and increased soil degradation, decreased food production, poorer air and water quality, more frequent and intense flooding and fires, and a deterioration of human health. We are to blame for the emergence of diseases like HIV, AIDS, Ebola, and COVID-19 due to our collective disregard for the integrity of natural ecosystems. Or we made it in a lab, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, however, with a little effort and longer term planning, we could make our future just that little less bit ghastly. Bit, that little bit less ghastly. We could potentially limit the damage if societies around the globe embrace certain fundamental yet achievable changes. Ah, as an as an interesting story. I don't know. I don't know. Are we all gonna die? Someday. Um, yeah, I guess on a long enough timeline, all life expectancy drops to fucking zero. So, <sighs> as Tyler Durden said. Our next story of the night from MSN.com. Spiders from East Japan from Japan could colonize the east coast of the US. Great, now it's a plague of spiders. Joro spiders, an invasive species from Japan, could spread through most of the United States East Coast, a new report says. The arachnids first showed up in the United States around 2013, says the report from the University of Georgia. The spiders have since become a familiar sight in the Peach State. Now the rest of the eastern seaboard could get caught up in their web. The creatures, which are yellow, blue, black, and red, have colonized much of D Japan, University of Georgia researchers said, and a similar climate could make the eastern U.S. spider central. Just by looking at it, it looks like the Joros could probably survive through most of the eastern seaboard here, which is pretty sobering said Andy Davis, a research scientist in the Odom School of Ecology and one of the study's authors. But the good news, Davis says, said, is that the spiders don't seem to harm local ecosystems. People should try to learn to live with them, he said. If they're literally in your way, I can see taking a web down and moving them to the side, but they're just going to be back next year. Those are those ones that, like, drop out of the fucking sky. Uh, oh, my, I, I don't ever 
move a web and move it to the side. I kill a spider in my head. <laughs> I killed one this morning, actually, crawling on my ceiling. I held my cat up to it, and he did nothing. So then I had to kill it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm not a spider fan, uh, but I used to have an insane fear of spiders. Um, like really bad. And so I wound up getting a tarantula for a while. What? And <laughs> I had it at the end of my bed. And now I'm not as afraid of the little ones anymore. Well, why would you do that? <clears throat> because I was afraid of them. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm just going to stay afraid of them, I think. <laughs> I, had a, I, had, I had a fear of heights and I went skydiving. Uh, so. Uh, uh, you're a different just, person than I'm I. Just, I'm just that dude. I'm just that guy. I don't. I don't. <sighs> when it comes to fear and shit, I. Uh, it's like it's like I told my cousin one day. I'm like, you know that someday I'm gonna get punched or shot because I don't have the capacity to back down. I hate bullies. Like I just like I'm that I'm that person. So when something like I have a fear, to me, that's like a bully. Yeah, you want to overcome it. I want to face it. Like, I'm just going to sit there and just look at it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how many times I've had people just get in my face and they think I'm going to back down. I just sit there. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it, I just don't have the capacity to. To not <clears throat> so and I, well, have I don't. Mouth. I don't have the capacity to put a tarantula at the foot of my bed. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I did. I didn't. I, like I said, it's just one of those things I wanted to. I wanted to be able to say I did this mm. and I overcame it. So I I just fucking grabbed it by the balls, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <sighs> I never I never picked her up or anything. Um, I just. You know, I'd clean up her cage every once in a while. So I would put my hand in her cage and Ugh. get very close oh. to her. Uh -uh. Um, but she moved very slow. Mm. Um, and she could always tell. They can tell how big you are, too. Like, by how much pressure you put on their web. And so she was never going to come out and fuck with me. <sighs> It makes me uncomfortable just thinking about it. I can't. Oh, I hate yeah. spiders. And it's a, it's an interesting creature to own. It's very interesting. They they'll teach you a lot about patience. Yeah, I mean, I've watched them before, and I don't necessarily enjoy killing them. And I don't kill them if they're outside. Right. But if they're in my home, they must die. But yeah, I don't want I, to I, kill I them. That. I want somebody else to kill them. I get that, but they, they are they are the most patient hunters on the fucking planet. They are. I've sat and watched some spiders, and our pier out on the lake is like a mecca at night. You can go out there and see some cool spidery shit. Yeah. But mm, uh, it makes me want to take all of my skin off. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I I like I said I I always had a huge fear of them. It didn't matter the size of the spider. You know, well, it could be this tiny little fucking yeah. thing, and I would be petrified. Um, so I, I just, like I said, I just wanted to overcome it. So I went to, it was a pet shop in New Hampshire, and picked one up. Um, this was back in the early two thousands, and I only had her for a, a little while, um, and then she wound up dying. Um, I think well, I, I exposure got therapy is cold. a real thing. I mean, so what you did was like a legit therapy option. Oh, yeah. So and I, it, I mean, it didn't get me completely over my fear of spiders or anything like I still it sure helped. Oh, yeah. It, it changed it in a big way. Like it got me over a huge hump. So like I'm not fucking like jumping out of my skin right. if I just see one. Well, you and know. just for the record, I'm not afraid of all bugs. I'm not one of those people that's like, ew, bugs. I actually like I love bugs. I pick <sighs> them up grasshoppers like I, I love them it's just i have like a six leg rule if you got more than six legs like we can't be uh, friends yeah so, eight, eight, uh, spiders suck and there's a reason worse <laughs> there's a reason why we're creeped out by that type of shit it's a yeah. genetic thing that's like ingrained into like us. an evolutionary thing <clears throat> yeah it's Ugh. not it's not something that you know is there for no reason whatsoever <laughs> right on to our, uh, you know, top 
uh, story of the night, I guess you could say, or our topic of the evening, topic du jour. Um, I came across this the other day by chance. I was I was on YouTube just looking at shit, and I often come across a, a bunch of different things. Um, and I came ac uh, across these uh, YouTube videos about a uh, sheriff's office uh, in Pasco County. I think it's Pasco County, California. Uh, not California, uh, Florida. That's being sued like three times over the past year for this um, intelligence led policing. Um, so then I looked into it a little more. And um, what it, exactly what it what it is. And yes, Phil, for the record, it is a re kind of a rebranding of community policing. However. You have to be right, motherfucker, all the time. And by the way, I don't care if it pisses you off. I think that Bobby and J fucking Jack Kennedy railed Marilyn <laughs> both at the same time on the fucking rotisserie. So suck it. Uh, but anyway, this intelligence led policing. Um, what they're doing, I think it, it's it's just downright targeting people. Um, in my opinion. Uh so intelligence led policing is a policing model built around the assessment and management of risk. Intelligence officers serve as guides to operations rather than operations guiding intelligence. Um, calls for intelligence led policing originated in the 1990s, both in Britain and the United States. In the U.S., Mark Reibling's 1994 book Wedge, the secret war between the FBI and the CIA, spotlighted the conflict between law enforcement and intelligence and urged cops to become more like spies. Intelligence-led policing gained considerable momentum globally following the September 11th terrorist attacks in the United States. It is now advocated by the leading police associations in North America and the UK. Although intelligence-led policing builds on earlier paradigms such as community policing, problem-oriented policing, and the partnership model of policing, it originated as a rejection of the reactive focus on crime of community policing with calls for police to spend more time employing from informants and surveillance to combat recidivist offenders. Recently, intelligence-led policing has gone, undergone a revisionist expansion to allow incorporation of reassurance and neighborhood policing. Um, so the story that I came across, I'm going to go... Uh, I went back and found the 2020, um, article. This is from September 3rd, 2020, um, from the Tampa Bay times. Uh, and this is about the, the, the whole program. So the Pasco County Sheriff Chris Noko took office in 2011 with a bold plan to create a cutting edge intelligence program that could stop crime before it happened. What he actually built was a system con to continuously monitor and harass Pasco County residents, a Tampa Bay Times investigation has found. First, the sheriff's office generates a list of people it considers likely to break the law based on arrest histories, unspecified intelligence, and arbitrary, arbitrary decisions by police analysts. Then it sends deputies to find and interrogate anyone whose name appears, often without probable cause, a search warrant, or evidence of a specific crime. They swarm homes in the middle of the night, waking families and embarrassing people in front of their neighbors. They write tickets for missing mailbox numbers and overgrown grass, saddling residents with court dates and fines. They come again and again, making arrests for any reason they can. One former deputy described the directive like this, make their lives miserable until they move or sue. In just five years, NOCO's signature program has ensnared almost 1,000 people. At least one in 10 were younger than 18, the Times found. Some of these people, some of the young people were labeled targets despite only having, despite having only one or two arrests. Rio Wajteki, uh, fuck that all up, 15, became a target in September 2019, almost a year after he was arrested for sneaking into carports with a friend and stealing motorized bicycles. 
Those were the only charges against Rio, and he had already had a state-issued juvenile probation officer checking on him. Yet from September 2019 to January 2020, Pasco Sheriff's deputies went to his home at least 21 times dispatch logs show. They showed up at the car dealership where his mom worked, looked for him at a friend's house, and checked his gym to see if he had signed in. More than once, the deputies acknowledged that Rio wasn't getting into trouble. They mostly grilled him about his friends, according to body camera video of the interactions. But he had been identified as a target, they said, so they had to keep checking on him. Since September of 2015, the sheriff's office has sent deputies on checks like those more than 12,500 times dispatch log Jeez. show. Wow. Deputies gave the mother of one teenager target a $2,500 fine because she had five chickens in her backyard. <clears throat> they arrested another target's father after peering through a window in his house and noticing a 17-year-old friend of his son smoking a cigarette. As they make checks, deputies feed information back into the system, not just on the people they target, but on family, family members, friends, and anyone else in the target's orbit. In the past two years alone, two of the nation's largest law enforcement agencies have scrapped similar programs following public outcries and reports documenting serious flaws. In Pasco, however, the initiative has expanded because he's a cunt. Last summer, the sheriff's office announced plans to begin keeping tabs on people who have been repeatedly committed to psychiatric hospitals. The Times shared its findings with the sheriff's office six weeks before this short story published. NOCO declined multiple interview requests. In statements that span more than 30 pages, the agency said it stands behind its program, part of a larger initiative it calls intelligence-led policing. It said other local departments use similar techniques and accuse the Times of cherry-picking examples and painting basic law enforcement functions as harassment. The sheriff's office said its program was designed to reduce bias in policing by using objective data. And it provided statistics showing a decline in burglaries, larcenies, and auto thefts since the program began in 2011, which isn't all that hard considering those crimes have been going down anyway. <clears throat> this reduction in property crime has a direct positive impact on the lives of the citizens of Pasco County. And for that, we will not apologize, one of the statements said. Our first and primary mission is to serve and protect our community. And the intelligence-led policing philosophy assists us in achieving this, that mission. But Pasco's drop in property crimes was similar to the decline in the seven uh, was similar to the decline in the seven largest nearby police jur just, uh, jurisdictions. Imagine that what I just said. <clears throat> Over the same time period, violent crime increased only in Pasco. <clears throat> Criminal justice experts said that they were stunned by the agency's practices. They compared the tactics to child abuse, mafia harassment, and surveillance that could be expected under an authoritarian regime. Morally repugnant, said Matthew Barge, an expert in police practices and civil rights who oversaw court-ordered agreements to address police misconduct in Cleveland and Baltimore. One of the worst manifestations of the intersection of junk science and bad policing and an absolute absence of common sense and humanity that I have seen in my career, said David Kennedy a renowned criminologist at the John Jay College of Criminal Justice. The John Jay College of Criminal Justice. It was, I, I feel like I should fucking see a fucking advertisement for that at 1 a.m. <laughs> right. Whose research on crime prevention is referred in PASCO's policies. The Times examination of PASCO's intelligence program comes amid a national debate over the role of police in society and calls to reduce funding for law enforcement or replace entire departments. For years, the program's inner workings have remained largely out of public view, even as no NOCO has touted its merits during debates and community forums. Times reporters combed through thousands of pages of documents, watched hours of body camera footage, and spent months obtaining and analyzing the target list, which had not been previously released. Pasco is an overwhelmingly white community, and the program did not appear to disproportionately target people based on race. But juvenile offenders, regardless of race, were an outsized priority for the intelligence program, according to former deputies and a Times data analysis. Of the 20 addresses visited by uh, visited most by its dedicated enforcement teams, more than half were home to middle or high schoolers who were identified as targets. And this goes on even more to go into it. Uh, I'm not going to go any further. Um, 
but it's quite obvious that this is literally just a way for them to target people that they feel based on the data are a problem and try to eliminate them from their town. That's so fucked. <laughs> all all in in for the greater good of the community. Like That's so we bullshit. shove them off on somebody else. That's all it is. It's just fucking shoving it off on somebody else. And it's it's uh to me it's gross. And the minute I saw it I was like this is fucking my minority report without the psychics. Without the three psychics having to all agree. <laughs> like it's fucking pre-crime. And it's it is fucking scary. Well, it's also like fundamentally un-American like you... <laughs> But that's not how you enforce the law. <laughs> no. Yeah. You don't have numbers on your mailbox. So we're going to fucking it, it, like, what the fuck is that? That type of shit. I mean, I get it. If there's a fucking problem. All right. Yeah. Dude, put your fucking numbers on your mailbox. Right. But not to the point of friggin', you know, kicking them out of the fucking town or her or whatever. That seems ridiculous. Like, that seems like something that you go, is there a reason? Like, is there a reason, like, why maybe you don't have one of numbers on your fucking mailbox? What's going on? What's the bigger picture? Well, they're using that as an excuse for why they had so many interactions. You know what I mean? Like, they've come and checked up on these people so many times. Well, geez, we got to hit them with something. Oh, yeah. We got to give them a reason. And got to like have chickens, a reason. The chickens in the backyard. Like, that's that's such bullshit. Jack, I don't accept notes from fathers. You can come back with a note from your doctor. Hmm. I don't accept that. And only if he shoves in a, a huge device up your ass first. <clears throat> if you don't like that, or if you do like that, then you have to stick your penis in a vagina. Hmm. If you happen to like that as well, the cold recesses of space. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, this, yeah, this program scares me. This seems very 1984. Um, uh, very, like I said, minority report. I think that minority report was, was it either, it was either a Heinlein book or a fucking Philip Dick book. One of the two. I am not helpful with those questions. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll actually, I'll look it up right now. Because I want to know. I feel like this is one of those things that the federal government should come in and be like, all right, guys, knock it off. Like, it's really reaching. Yeah, it is. It was based on a Philip Dick novel. So, yeah. And he wrote some really cool shit. I actually recently read the first my very first philip dick novel i've never read any of his stuff before big fan of like the the stuff that they've made in the movies and shit but um i've never i had never read any of stuff um and i can't remember which one it was that i read it was a they find a portal to another world and they start they want to send people over there to get rid of people <laughs> It's a, it's a pretty it was, it was an, it was an interesting story how it all how it all came about but um but yeah it's, it, it, uh minority report was a philip dick uh novel which totally makes sense um but yeah I, I see this and i'm like it's it's fucking minority report they're you know but without the you know they don't have the supernatural element to it it's all based on just intelligence and but the, I, I all of that is flawed because you have to look at it with human eyes. Yeah. And, you know, even if you're looking at it, like, let's say with an AI, you know, the, the problem with AI right now is that we program it. And there's still bias put into the programming. So I just don't know that anything like this could ever work to, you know, in a utopian way. It, you know, on paper, it sounds great. You know, if it, you know, like I said, these systems that we have in place, like algorithms, algorithms can fucking almost determine what we would want based on our habits. 
Yeah, now apply but... that apply that to this type of a system and someone now it it, it 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 may fuck up all the time but you get it in the hands of some fucking zealot who thinks it's 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 working and it's going to be very scary yeah so i this i express extreme caution to people with this like well... Ugh. yeah it's it's gross and it goes against like basic human rights like it's you're just assuming that somebody's gonna make the poor choice and you can't so you harass uh, them until they're gone right like it just it's it is gross it's an invasion that is not uh, i don't like it Ugh. yeah it's it's it, it leaves a slick on you like it, yeah. it's like a filth just knowing that this is going on in your country you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it's so anti against like our freedom. Like, yeah, and, if I uh, and, um, mess and up, imagine, come in, but and imagine it's in Florida. Oh, imagine people. Well, maybe that's <laughs> what they think. That's what it takes to fight Florida man. You know? <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> fucking know. Holy shit! That fucking that state is just so full of fucking yahoos. It's a wild place. It's it's the wild west of the South. I tell you, I love to go there for vacation, but you'll never see me own property there. <laughs> never. I'll, ne I'll never forget. I went down to visit my cousin. My cousin lived in a town. I can't remember the name of it now. Oh, Bradenton, uh, which is just south of Tampa. Yeah. And he's like, hey, you should come you know, stay the week while you're down here. I'm like, all right. So all week, you know, I'm hanging out there, tooling around. Um going outside in the middle of the night smoking butts and you know just doing my normal thing like i normally would and i go home <clears throat> i get i wind up uh getting a job much later working with a guy who's familiar with the area and we get talking he's talking about going down to florida and i said yeah i just went down recently and saw my my cousin down at bradenton and uh, he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I went down and saw my cousin down in Bradenton. He's like, that shithole? Hmm. I'm like, I oh, didn't seem all that bad when I was there. He's like, dude, there's like a shooting every fucking night in Bradenton. If not multiple. He's like, look it up on Google. So I fucking did. Like, I'm like checking it out. And I, son of a bitch was right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, get the fuck out. Place was crazy. And I was like, I spent a fucking week there and had no clue. <laughs> Zero fucking clue. Uh, it just, uh, so that place, uh, Florida is just wacky. It's just it wacky. Is. But this does not surprise me at all. So, and this is from uh, February 28th. 2022 and this is from wfla.com and lawsuit alleges pasco sheriff's intelligence led policing violates civil rights yeah tampa florida the third lawsuit filed within a year against pasco county sheriff chris noco alleges the department's intelligence led policing goes too far and violates the civil rights of the targets Eileen Cates claims the sheriff's office harassed her with warrantless searches and minor offenses included lack of proper numbering on her home. Cates alleges her son was on the county's so-called prolific offender list due to his criminal record, so deputies also confronted her several times. The actual purpose of the ILP program is to force citizens with prior records to move, the federal filing states. Neither Cates nor her attorney have yet to respond to the request for comment. Rachel Wilburn, who made similar allegations in a separate lawsuit, did move out of the county after she was arrested for minor offenses, including not having numbers on her mailbox. The charges were dropped before Wilburn filed her lawsuit, but the veteran with no criminal record still spent time in jail. Walk into population and everyone said, oh, fresh meat. Look who's coming in, Wilburn recalled, fighting back tears. To be put in a cell for three hours, I felt so disgusted and so disrespected. Try 48 hours, honey. I've fucking done it for 48. It's fucking a lot worse than three. 
The first lawsuit aimed at Pasco's ILP was filed last March by the parents of another alleged target. Robert Jones III told Eight on Your Side the harassment was consistent. They came every single day, Jones said. Sheriff Noko has declined several requests for interviews to discuss complaints about ILP. Spokesperson Amanda Hunter said the Pasco Sheriff's Office continues to be successful in defending against similar frivolous, frivolous lawsuits and defended ILP. You piece of shit. The ILP philosophy has led to a reduction in crime and reduction in victimization in our community, Hunter said. And we will not apologize for continued efforts to keep our community safe. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Crime statistics obtained by eight on your side show the overall crime rate in Pasco County is down 47% since NOCO implemented ILP around the time he took office in 2011. But violent crime is up by 16% during that decade, and domestic violence has spiked by 38%. <laughs> Kate's lawsuit was filed earlier this month. Judges in other cases have ordered mediation that is scheduled to start in April in Jones's lawsuit in July for Wilburn's case. I hope that this gets fucking destroyed. I really hope it gets just destroyed. Because... I. I if this key continues on as a practice used by the police, I, what that what then? So we just push people out of towns into other towns and then push them in. Right. So we yeah, just shuffle people around the country. Like how does that? That's like what they do with homeless people, right now. Right. They'll just fucking pack them onto a bus and take them to another city, and dump them off. So you just literally dump your problem off on another community. How does that fucking solve the problem? And that's and by the way, that's so American too. It's gross. You know, it's it, 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 and the fact that we all think that being American is somehow being better. Take a fucking good look at this country. It's not. Being American is being a piece of shit. Sorry, but it is. We're self-centered pieces of shit, wrapped up in our own bullshit. Every single one of us, me included. Yeah, you're not wrong. Me fucking included. And that's why, because we all just turtle ourselves into our own existence. We just fucking stick our head in our little shell. Oh, I don't want to see what's going on around me. Oh, you know, because God fucking forbid. Yeah, th it, this type of shit and the stuff that they, they do with fucking... You know, uh, the criminal system with putting people in jail, in the, it, it is just infuriating. Yeah, Beyond the fact that that lady, the fact that that lady even spent one hour in jail, let alone three, for not having numbers on her mailbox, that's that's a ticket. You oh, know, you, you give somebody a yeah. ticket for that. You don't take them yeah. to jail. Yeah. That's, that's outrageous. Yeah, I went. I went to. I went to jail for a text message that wasn't even sent to the victim. So, <sighs> it is crazy the am way. Am I allowed to talk? Am like I allowed to talk goes. about that now? <laughs> I don't know. I'm allowed to talk about that? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure I am. Well, the only uh, bright thing that I plucked out of those two things you read was the first one did say that. They're not the first department to do this. There have been other programs in the past and they uh, yep. were shut down. So I hope that this one has the same result as those. Well, well, my my biggest issue with it is that there are so many people that are coming out that are in that business, that are in policing, that are saying these tactics are not right. No, they're not this right. And they're not, not even effective either. No, it, it's, it's just stupid. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I hope that they, that somebody goes in there and just takes a fucking uh, a baseball bat and knocks some sense into old Noko there. Um, yeah. you know, somebody on par with him, not like, not like a citizen, uh, <laughs> a peer, a peer, somebody who could just, you know, Hey, fuck face. You're not doing the right thing. Right. Dong. Ring his bell, you know? <sighs> But uh, I don't know anymore. I fucking just don't know. 
I, I we live in this weird fucking weird world where the rules are changing so fucking fast. Yeah. That one week you you can say something, the next week you can't. I, I I'm sorry, I didn't grow up in that world. But now all of a sudden I've been shoved into it. I grew up in a world where you could say whatever the fuck you wanted. Not so much anymore. Not so much. So, on that note, uh, you got anything else, Katie? Uh, else nope. Week? <laughs> no. All right. So, yeah, I have a huge problem with all of this, obviously. I'm yeah. not a... I'm not a big fan of uh, the way policing is done in this country anyway. And, that, and that's not to say that I'm I'm against cops. Okay? Cops are people. You know, I'm against the system. Yeah. I think the system is flawed. The system is fucked. You know, I, I deal in my community. I deal with the police. Not on a regular basis, but I've dealt with them. I've met a few of them. They're very nice guys. Super nice guys. And I'm sure they, you know, they're just doing their fucking job just like everybody else. It's the fucking system. And it's when people put in systems in place like this one, this intelligence-led policing system, it it cheapens everything else. It ruins it. So I'm hopeful that they see through all that and they change it and things that there are changes made. Because when yeah. I saw this, I was just like, how are we fucking doing this? How are we fucking doing Minority Report? Somebody's Why is it that nobody else? There. I, I can't believe I didn't find a single story about it that said that related related it to Minority Report. <laughs> I mean, because it's the only thing it's missing is the fucking little psychics to stop. You know, the, we think you're going to commit a crime. <laughs> well, their data is their psychics. So, right. And, and like I said, I think this is going to, if this continues, it's going to turn into an algorithm. And the algorithm is going to decide who to target. Right. And that's where it gets scary. Yeah. That's, once you that put is that where in the it hands of an artificial, Yeah. Once you put it in the hands of an artificially intelligent being making those decisions, it gets really scary really quick. Yeah. So, so, you know, Skynet. I think it's Skynet. I think it's fucking Terminator. We're all done. <clears throat> uh, Suzanne Marvel, Bigfoot ate my homework. Again, not an excuse I buy. Not an excuse I buy. So, on that note, this has been the 40 and Slip, episode 205, The Minority Report. Uh, if you like this shit, uh, you know, support us. Go to fucking, go to Anchor. You know, subscribe to the show, download the show from there. You know, you can go to fucking Facebook, facebook.com forward slash the 40 and slip and follow the fucking page. Support the page, comment on the fucking posts, like the posts. Be a happy motherfucker. And uh, I posted recently a picture that Dreadfun did of Conan. Go fucking check out Dreadfun at youtube.com forward slash Dreadfun. Fred's a great guy. Good guy all the time. And I got to get in touch with old Bronx Johnny over at uh, High Society Radio. Um, I've been meaning to talk to him to see about having him on again. So I'm hoping within a couple of weeks I can touch base with him and see if uh, he's available. Maybe I can get him on within a month or so. <clears throat> Do something with him. But uh, until next week, ladies and gentlemen, see ya.